This video is sponsored by The World of Haiku, a fun, gamified way to build your basic skills in cybersecurity. Learn more about my thoughts about this game in a few moments. A lot of us like to think that cybersecurity is here. Or perhaps it is here. Or perhaps you think it is something much bigger. Oftentimes, what us beginners may not realize is how big the spectrum of cybersecurity is. In today's small video, I'm going to be overviewing the domains of cybersecurity. Whether you're a seasoned professional or just a brand new student, it's always good to refresh yourself on the cybersecurity domains. Let's go back to our diagram. I call this the big picture. A unified overview that includes, but is not limited to, the IT domains of security, that is, cybersecurity. Each one of these main domains represents a piece of cybersecurity in terms of the roles, responsibilities, the tools, technologies, processes, and so much more wordy stuff that you can go on and on about. Each domain relates back to the overall definition and goal of cybersecurity, and that is to prevent and mitigate or reduce risk to business. Depending on who you ask and perhaps where you learn from, there's going to be a set amount of domains and they're going to vary from place to place. For the sake and length of this video, I have categorized the domains of security into the following. Now, you know, as a seasoned professional, you may realize that I may be missing something, but I'm trying to touch the high level overview of security and how it all comes together. Before getting started, the order and specific title of each domain do matter depending on the type of industry this company resides in, uh, you know, what location or how they transact business, as well as, you know, how or where their company is being developed. It's all going to play a significant factor in prioritizing the, quote, domains of cybersecurity. Also, this is probably going to be like a, wor a wordy video, lots of terms and terminology, so just bear this in mind. It's a, it's a high-level overview, but let's go ahead and get started with good old security architecture. Now, security architecture is a unified security design, which focuses on preventing, mitigating, and responding to potential risks posed to an organization. Security architecture consists of preventative, detective, responsive security controls, that are implemented in infrastructure, applications, users, and more. Security architecture ultimately uh, considers building a secure system by design and from the ground up and then actively maintaining that system. And a system, a broad word, could mean an application, it could mean a corporate network, it could mean a Kubernetes cluster running in a production network. There are so many different types of quote unquote systems. Security architecture is going to consist of many different facets, including network security and design, endpoint security, identity access management, also known as IAM, security engineering, security vulnerability management, such as patching vulnerabilities and cryptography and securing information. Each of these different facets could be considered a subdomain in and of itself. Next is enterprise risk assessment and management. In the context of cybersecurity, risk assessment and management is used to identify, estimate, and prioritize risks posed to the operations of information systems or just IT infrastructure in a company. Risk assessment is often a, a business concept. It's not just in the world of security. Uh, it often considers the monetary losses and gains of a business. An organization will need to consider how money is made how employee and assets affect the profitability of the business, and what risks could result in a large monetary loss. Are you willing to accept those losses if that happens? In security, there are a multitude of factors to be considered in risk assessments and overall cybersecurity risk management and evaluates the organization's vulnerabilities and threats to identify the risk it faces. This also includes coming up with a plan to mitigate those risks, uh, how to respond, disaster recovery responses, uh, and, and for example, this is where maybe a traditional penetration test or red team could come in to identify risks, vulnerabilities posed to a company and, and add real value to that company's operations. Quick transition over to today's sponsor, World of Haiku. This game is available on Steam. World of Haiku is a fun, gamified way to build the foundational skills of cybersecurity and IT. This game takes you through a cyberpunk RPG adventure in a world where the only way to survive is to constantly learn new skills. In each mission, you as a player and as part of a freelance hacking team will understand some basic part of security. So that could be the Linux operating system, using tools such as Nmap, Hydra, or John the Ripper. 
and you're trying to fight against mega corporations and governments. Now, this cool little feature, each achievement earned in game can be converted into LinkedIn badges to demonstrate to employers that you take interest outside of the classroom. There are plans to make a DLC to cover the graphical version of Kali Linux, the OSCP certification, and just build more broad content for students, elementary, and high school. If you are interested, you can join the community Discord server for new updates, member feedback, and more information on the game's lore. Thanks to the World of Haiku team for sponsoring today's video. Next is Threat Intelligence. Threat Intelligence is the evaluation and collection of information about cyber threats and threat actors. Threat Intelligence collects a wide array of different information, often including open source intelligence, social media, human technical knowledge, and dark, deep dark web. All of those are different areas that people or companies can collect threat intelligence from. Threat intelligence is trying to add context into who is attacking your organization, what their motivations are, and perhaps their indicators of compromise to know that maybe a threat actor group has compromised your company network and how to respond to that. Okay, so governance risk compliance, GRC, is the next domain. And oftentimes, this is considered the strategic quote unquote, business side of security. Now governance establishes the policies or basically what is going to happen, the standards, the rules set in place, and the processes, the step-by-step -step, or just the actions to get and fulfill those rules. Governance tends to emphasize, like I said, the strategic overall uh, plan of how security should work. R is risk or risk assessment. Like I said, we've already kind of overviewed this, but overall it's about, uh, evaluating risk and then uh, coming up with a plan to mitigate or to, uh, you know, just manage risk to a business. And finally, compliance is about establishing and following mandatory laws and regulations in addition to following voluntary company policies, procedures, guidelines, and much more. Security management is going to be a component of GRC, and this includes user and user awareness training, understanding change management processes, basically how does a company deal with change in their IT environment and while well, aligning with the overall business goals so that they can meet together. Next is application security and application security is going to concentrate on building, monitoring and maintaining secure systems by design. Application security deals with a handful of issues, including providing secure code training for software developers, performing code analysis on a network, overseeing software development lifecycle, and handling application quality assurance, API monitoring and security, data quality and security. That's all going to be happening, well, in the application security department. Security operations, perhaps you may may have heard of this if you go look up online. Basically, it's the day-to-day -day activities of maintaining the security within a business environment. Security operations includes multiple different components, like I said, all different types of subdomains, and this could include incidents response, digital forensics, basically evidence collection, network security and administration, such as monitoring network equipment, uh, and threat hunting so that you're trying to proactively look for threats within your environment. Security operations is going to take many forms and depending on how big the business is, they can build a security operations center, SOC, in-house, or they can give that to a third party managed service that will monitor their, their network for them. Now, a SOC is a centralized unit, which is going to focus on the day-to-day -day monitoring of um, you know the whole entire company's network alerts and events will be collected aggregated triaged and then escalated if they are deemed uh, that level of severity events could be attacking an entire company network and infiltrating with ransomware you know you see that every day to day but it also could be um, a, a specific attacker who has some motivations to get onto your production network or anything in between it really doesn't limited to anything. Finally, the last domain, kind of overall domain here, is physical security. And that's going to be, of course, preventing and protecting on dealing with threats on a physical basis. Physical security includes the protection of personnel, controlling who and where access is granted to. Maybe it's hardware, software, data centers, or just data in general. Physical security also considers the protection from natural disasters, such as fire, flood, or you know some other natural disaster that could destroy a data center. Physical security is often 
a very much so overlooked component of security and is something you have to evaluate and consider depending on what industry the business is in and you know all of that stuff. So this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to cybersecurity domains. And there, there are so many different domain specialties. I hope that this video has given you a broad granular overview of security or security domains. It's much bigger and there are lots of different professions that you can do in security. So that is important to keep in mind when you are just beginning or if you're wanting to pivot into a different role in security. So yeah, hopefully it's been informative. Uh, well, yeah, thanks for watching and have a good day.